All right, we hope everybody's doing well. We wanted to show our 600 watt complete solar power system. We've had it up and running for almost two years now with no issues. And we figured now would be a good time to go ahead and show everybody what we did. Now your local laws, jurisdictions, and where you live is all gonna dictate how you can install these things. We didn't wanna deal with any of the power company issues or anything like that. So this is an off grid system. It is not connected to the power company's line service. The power company has been out here. They've seen it and they are happy with it. So this is our particular setup. Your area may vary. So please, when messing around with anything to do with electricity, be careful and know what you're doing. So now with all that out of the way, let's get into our actual system here. We have six 100 watt Ren Energy panels. They are wired in series parallel. So we have uh, two series strings of three that are linked up in parallel. They are in the ground here with Unistrut. We got that at the local hardware store. And basically we bored down about, I don't know, two feet down there. And you can see the concrete we use those four inch or maybe that's the eight inch tubes. And we went a couple of feet down, about 24 inches, two feet or so. And this thing is held up pretty well out here to some winds that were in excess of about 30, 40 miles an hour. And uh, some old hurricane winds that came through. So it's, it's been pretty well. We'll come around back and take a look at it real quick. All right, we're in the back of the panels here. And as you can see, they are just the standard Renogy 100 watt panels and basically we have them on some unistrut up there on the top and the bottom and we just made some brackets ourselves here and as you can see it's in the ground pretty well there like we said we had some hurricane winds come through here and they held up pretty well everything's held up very very well so on the back here we do have a grounding strap to go ahead and ground everything, as you can see there. I believe that's eight gauge, and we'll have links for everything in the description that we can link down there as time permits. But as you can see, it's all the solar panels are connected and we've been through storms, like we said. And this is grounded down here into a grounding rod, again, about two feet down. So that copper wire go, goes ahead and touches all of these solar panels. And that's kind of how we wanted to keep it so that everything's grounded. As far as the wires, we protected everything with some cheap Harbor Freight wire loom. And again, they're all series parallel connected. So we had to get some branch connectors. And we got a inline fuse here. So you always want to have a fuse. So we got the solar panels and then they all hit a fuse here. But we got some branch connectors here. Take a look at them one there and a branch connector there and that's what takes the two series strings and puts them into parallel and basically we're controlling the voltage and the amperage coming down so we have all that connected in goes into a conduit here keeps everything weather tight uh, the sun faded the stickers we had some stickers here but the conduit comes all the way around And it goes into the house there, not touching any of the city power. So we'll go inside and take a look at it. This grounding strap is actually coming from inside to out here for the system. Inside the inverter and all that, and that's another two feet down. All right, you'll just have to excuse the mess in here for right now. We're doing some rearranging. But the negative and positive from the solar panels come in through here. And they go into a solar breaker. So that's a 32 amp, I believe, breaker. C32 and a 50, maybe? Not sure. Uh, the correct links will be in the description, but this is basically for this system, and you're going to have to calculate your own needs. But we do have the panels coming into a breaker, and then they come through, and the battery also has a breaker. And basically... The line will come in from the solar panels, go into this PV breaker, and then go into the charge controller side of the solar. 
The same thing for the battery down below. The batteries are down here. So the batteries also are in this breaker and they will go into the um, charge controller as well. So basically everything going to this charge controller is fused. We do not want anything uh, going to the charge controller that's not fused or anything coming from the battery. So basically you have your power come in from your solar panels to here, solar panels go to here, it does its magic inside this 40 amp charge controller, this MPPT, Renogy, and basically puts out DC voltage for the batteries back through here into the breaker, comes out and goes all the way down into a fuse there. And that's like one of those solar fuses that they include. Let me turn on the light here for you guys. Make it a little better, there we go. And that's one of them solar, cheap little fuses you can find on Amazon. It came with the Renogy kit. And that's basically gonna go down and charge the battery here. And you got the negative and positive there. Um, that's our shunt, so we can see how much power we're generating in and out, and we'll go check that out. And then we have our battery crossovers here for these batteries. Um, Big question, can you link two different type of lithium batteries? We've been doing it for almost two years and we have no issues. So now you've got your solar power coming into your charge controller, your charge controller charging your batteries. Now you wanna take your batteries and get it to the inverter. That's where this next piece comes in. This is a T-class fuse here. Huge fuse. We think it's absolutely necessary Basically, when this if this fuse blows, there's no chance of electric arc over coming through there because we got a 3,000 watt pure sine wave inverter here. And this 3,000 watt pure sine wave inverter will draw a few hundred amps easily. I mean, if we're pulling 1,000 watts, 1,500 watts, we're drawing over 100 amps. If something were to catch fire, you don't want that little cheap fuse there in the background, that one right there. That's just basically a 40 amp fuse for the solar panels and the charge controller coming down to the batteries. But when you're drawing out that power, if you want to sleep good at night, you need a T-class fuse in there. We have it coming through a marine grade, huge switch. It's about the size of my hand. Disconnect switch into the inverter. Now all these wires here are 2 aught gauge, more than sufficient for what we're doing. Uh, we do want to shorten some of them, which we probably will shorten some of them. As you can see here, cables are definitely longer than they need to be, but they're working well. Um, and then we have the 3000 watt power inverter, which we have hardwired some switches in and you have a few switches or a few outlets here. And we have a remote switch outside, which we'll show in a second. But this system runs 24 seven flawlessly for almost two years. We'll show you what we're running. Uh, basically up here, we can pull 20 amps out of our 12 volt sockets here. So we'll run uh, these Rode Pro products. They're great. They're excellent. Uh, this is a heater and a cooler. That's a little crock pot. I have a whole bunch of ovens from them. Uh, excellent, excellent company, and this charge controller will allow about 21 amps to pull through here. So, serves all of our needs through DC power out of the cigarette type connector. Uh, we have Anderson power pull, all types of different options, direct hookups. So, it's really limitless what you can do. We'll get out there and show you the shunt, and then we'll show you everything we're running. Alright, this is our remote out switch here. The refrigerator or the freezer's on right now so we have 400 amp hours we got 84 percent left bc it's drawing down about six amps 100 watts so not a real big load at all for this and then we have the master on off switch out here that we can turn on and off but we basically run all that stuff in there we can run a small refrigerator we run this huge frigidaire uh deep freezer stand up it's probably about six feet tall or so so we run that whole thing 24 7.
All right, we charge up all of our lawn batteries, cell phones, any real USB devices. So the main thing is the thing you're worried about is the reserve capacity overnight if you're going to be running things. So we have 400 amp hours. If we charge all of our devices and run the refrigerator all night, we might burn off 150 amp hours. So we have plenty of reserve for a couple days and that's the big thing. So when a lot of people ask the question of what you can run off your solar power system, it's not in terms of how many panels you have because we only have 600 panels here, but we generate over two kilowatts of energy a day. So that's a lot of energy. Um, the refrigerator uses less than a kilowatt a day and things like that. You know, you may only use a couple hundred watt hours to charge your cell phone. So I know we're going to get some flack about some things from the electronic people uh, in the comments, but if you have any questions or concerns, drop them in the comments. We'll try and answer them. Again, this system's been running flawlessly for almost two years. Check it daily, nothing's ever gotten hot. It charges the batteries at around 38 amps at 55 volts or so, 50, 55 volts. So this charge controller is maxed out for what it is. But other than that, any questions, just drop a comment. Thanks for watching.